fell down. Looking at that, Larry, that also brings up another point. The ice in the Memorial Coliseum was out, and they just put it back in last night. And talking to the players before the game, they were not happy with the ice. It was very chippy, and they said very slow. Well, any time that you've got new ice, it has to be skated on for a couple of days before it uh, gets worked in. And it is. It's very hard, very brittle. You're going to see a lot of stoppages for repair here tonight. And uh, also, it is very what players call slow ice. Off the faceoff, Comets control. They have it back in the neutral zone. Gillen sends off the boards. It deflects into the Muskegon end. Doesn't make it to the back line as Node plays it there. Now is chased by a pair of Comets, but does manage to clear to center ice to Don Keller. On the left wing to Calendar across the Fort Wayne line. Calendar trying to get around Craig Channel. Stopped in the left corner. Now Channel checks him into the boards. Puck is knocked free by Channel. Up to Schreiber. He's tied up, however, and leveled by Corrales as now the puck is sent out of the zone back to the Muskegon end. Node plays it, but can't clear it. Kept in by Sabucci. Still. Well, for the first time in the series, the Comets have taken the early lead. one nothing to it Wayne here on the goal by Steve Sabucci. Right up Brian Ford. It is controlled by the Comets. Here's Channel at the left point. Now trying to pass to Hendricks. That's blocked by Node. It's picked off by Wayne Groove. Drew on the right wing, takes the shot at the line, now gets a wrist shot off, wider than that. Rebound, played off by Anderson. He comes back two on two. Now Anderson across the Muskegon line on the right wing. Corrales plays him. Anderson gives off to Russ Adam. Adam with eight seconds left in the penalty to McKaylick. Now sends to the right point to Hendricks, back to Adam. Cross ice, left point to Channel, plays it off the boards. He shot his block and put by Corrales. Now McKaylick is out of the box. Corrales. Didn't see him, I don't think, as now he comes across the line, leads it off to Drew, a shot, he scores! Just a great shot, just a super shot. Wayne Drew gets the equalizer. Just as the Lumberjack, Steve McKaylick came out of the box to make it four on four. Tom Corrales came in across the line, dropped it off to Wayne Drew, and Drew with that very quick, patented, hard wrist shot of his, put it off, Hokey Reddick and into the net, and Larry were tied at one. There's no question Wayne Drew is a gunner, and that time, I mean, he gets the shot away just so quickly. Uh, that was a quick wrist shot that uh, beat Pokey Reddick, and uh, it brought some life over to our bench. And then look at the Muskegon fans all standing in their black and gold. Number four in the playoffs for Wayne Drew, his second of the series. And again, it came with both teams skating at four men aside. The assist to Steve McKaylick. And the time 5.03 of this second period. Muskegon, Benoit wins it back to Node. Node then sends it behind his own net to Corrales. Tom Corrales elects to pass off on the right side to Node as the Lumberjacks break the zone. Node sends into the Fort Wayne end. Gruel going after in the slot, but Ryder beats him to it for the Comets. Ryder clears to center ice, picked off there by Corrales. In across the line, Corrales freezes by. The man Hendricks and tries to center one, but that's blocked in front by Ryder. Now, for the score! with Reddick out of his net going for the puck. The disc was centered from behind the net by Gruel, I believe. We'll have to wait and see, but Corrales, alone on the doorstep, puts it into the open net, and the Lumberjacks take the 2 to 1 lead. You see this guy Gruel and Keith and set up Tommy Corrales right in front, and Reddick was nowhere to be found. He was out by the faceoff circle. Well, as the Lumberjacks came across the blue line, they tried to pass toward the slot, but Hendricks and Reddick both went for the puck, and they were tangled up together to the right of the net, and thus the Fort Wayne goal was wide open, and it was Benoit now who centered it from behind the net, and Corrales was the beneficiary of that pass, and he put it into the open net for his first playoff goal, and it's a big one as it gives the Lumberjacks their first lead here. With 7.29 left in the second period, it's 2-1 Muskegon by Allison up to Benoit. Now Benoit sends in the left corner. Channel flips it along the boards. Benoit keeps it in, however. 22 seconds left in the period. Buck still loose along the board. Summer fighting to keep it in. Now it's taken by Channel. He can't clear it. Kept in left point by Charlesworth. In the slot to Groy scores! What a big goal, Bob, with just 13 seconds to go here in the second period. That was just an incredible play. Roy Summer made the whole thing possible by keeping the puck in there, and then it came out to the point, and I believe it was Tommy Corrales. I'm not really Todd sure. Todd Charlesworth. It was Todd Charlesworth then that got the puck in front, and Scotty Groy made no mistake, put it behind Volky Reddick. 
Heck of a play between Charlesworth and Gruel as well. As the puck was sent to the line, Charlesworth, as Larry said, kept it in. He sent it to the slot, and Scott Gould, not bothering to stop it at all, just shooting it off the pass, and I believe he really caught Reddick off guard there as Pokey wasn't looking for such a quick shot. The puck won by Adam, left point to Burton. His shot blocked in front by Allison. Puck behind the net, centered out by Adam. No one there for the Comets, loose on the right side. Now Gru and Adam fighting to gain control. It's kicked behind the net. Played in the left corner by Charlesworth. He sends one out to the neutral ice zone. Played there by Chandler Fort Wayne to Blossom. He's shadowed by Allison. Gets the pass off along the Burton in front to Adam. Knocked out from behind by Summer. And again, he goes into the goal and Ross Adam is hurt as Roy Summer now is being wrestled with in the left corner by some of the comments. Roy Summer back checking as hard as he could, tried to get a piece of Adam, and he did, well, the shot. Summer's hard work there saved the goal. He sure did, I didn't see anything bad with that because Roy Summer was just doing a good job of back checking. And now Fort Wayne's showing their frustrations out there. Anderson's going after, I think it's uh, Roy Summer. We've got uh, a couple of other players over in the corner of the ice. So this is just frustration coming out on the part of the Fort Wayne Comets. to be hurt rather seriously as not only the trainer Steve Wisman out there to attend to him, also the Lumberjack trainer Ed Niesner. And they are calling for some emergency help right now. As Russ Adam is lying on his back, the Muskegon goal is off its moorings and this doesn't look good. And again, it was not a bad play by Roy Summer. He was hustling, doing some back checking. He got a piece of Adam, so he would not get the good shot off, and the momentum carried Adam into the pool. And Adam right now is in obvious pain. It looks as if the injury is around the neck area. And that is just a terrible place to see a man injured at is now they're quickly calling for He's the stretcher. definitely in a great deal of pain down there. They brought the stretcher out on the ice. I just hope that he didn't catch, you know, the old type nets here where they've got the uh, pipes coming up instead of the magnets. And, uh, you know, I just fear because that went flying off that he might have caught himself and actually uh, impaled himself on it. The other thing that's a problem with these nets, if you notice the sharp point, Bob, in the middle of the net that sticks out. Mark Howe, I can remember a very serious injury, uh, almost ended his career, getting impaled on that sharp point. So I don't know, but he's in a great deal of pain. Whenever you see a player out like that and his legs are just, he has no control over them. They're just shaking, and it's a sad thing. They here, because of the, of the player being down now, uh, the fans are getting a little bit on goalie here. That's exactly what I thought. They were afraid to lift them up onto that. They're now bringing out a, a large piece of plywood uh, that they're trying to slide under without moving the player. Uh, let's just hope that this is not a real serious injury. Well, they're now trying to help Russ Adam onto that piece of plywood that they have brought out. Still, we don't see any paramedics, and this is a real shame here players and of course the two trainers and it looks like a couple of doctors are trying their best but we have yet to see any ambulance or paramedics and with the severity of the injury that it appears to be that it's just a shame and anytime you see a man motionless like that you always think of uh, the worst which could be certainly paralysis we hope that is not the case adam did go in hard Heading himself against the goal post and knocking the goal off its moorings. And you could tell right away that he was hurt very seriously. Now they do have him on that sheet of plywood and they are carrying Russ Adam off into the tunnel. They meeting two trainers and a couple of stadium workers. But again, no ambulance and no paramedics. And I just can't understand that. Clock point to Johnson. He shot, save for a rebound. Salucci score. Second goal of the night. This one coming on the rebound, and 
Now the Comets are right back in at 3-2. But Steve Salvucci with his second goal of the game, this one coming on the rebound off the shot from the point by Johnston. His tenth of the playoffs, and now it's a three to two game with eight minutes and five seconds left, and it's going to be a wild finish here in the Memorial Coliseum. The assists go to Johnston and Randy Gillen at 11.55. At center ice, Lane Drew against Gillen on the faceoff. Comets win it to Ryder, now to Johnston. He tips into the Muskegon end, played there by Corrales. They clear it out again to center ice. Taking it for the Comets is Ryder. Now intercepted by Drew in the neutral zone. He dumped in along the right side, played there by Johnston. Clears to the blue line to Salvucci. Now Drew takes it away. Drew gets off to Sturby, shooting, he scores! Oh, what a big goal, Bob. Absolutely an outstanding play by Mike Forbes to keep that puck alive in the Comet zone. So Forbes keeps it alive. Drew comes up with a puck, makes a nifty move to get free, and instead of taking the shot, he drops it behind to Todd Struby, and Struby let it go. That beat Pokey Reddick the goal for Todd Struby, his seventh of the playoffs, and it certainly takes all of the momentum away from the Comets. After Steve Salvucci had tightened the gap to three to two, with his second goal of the hockey game, Todd Struby from Muskegon comes right back just 25 seconds later to get the goal. It's now another two goal lead at four to two. And Todd Charlesworth, both of whom have played stellar games on defense tonight. It'll be Randy Gillen to face off for the Comets against Benoit. Players are set. Benoit being told to back up a bit. Here's the good face off, controlled by Gillen to Burton. Now a shot by Ryder, and Ford just gets a piece of it, deflecting it wide to the left. Meanwhile, the Lumberjacks get the rebound and clear it back to the Fort Wayne Blue Line. 145 left. Here's Gillen having his progress stopped by Benoit. Puck taken by Scott Gould. In across the line, Gould dumps behind the Fort Wayne net. Stopping it there is Reddick. And he gives off to Dan Ryder. The score and the clock are the Comets' enemies right now as the puck is shot in by Gillen behind the Muskegon net. Loose on the left side. Here's Schreiber centering one in front. Burton just can't get his stick on it, trying for the shot from the right side. And the Jacks come back three on one. Rule, Polonich, and Benoit. Rule with the puck now to Benoit. Shot. He scores! Turn out the lights. The party's over. Guy Benoit has put the lid on this one for the Muskegon Lumberjacks as the Comets Rushing all five players in the Muskegon end. Couldn't come up with a shot. The puck was sent out, and the forward line of Gruel, Benoit, and Polonich came down three on one. Gruel carrying the puck on the left side, went into the left circle, passed it off to Benoit in the high slot. Benoit put it home. It's five to two Muskegon with a minute 12 left. And yes, the Jacks will be coming home with a three game in on lead with two games in their own building. And now we see some foolishness on the part of Fort Wayne. Uh, I can't tell who the player is, but they jumped one of our players right at center ice. Absolutely no need. The frustration is really showing. It's too bad because they have a great hockey team. Uh, you know, things like this are sad. It shouldn't be part of the game. Well, it's Tony Camazzola who jumped the lumberjack man. And now the Muskegon player just getting up, and it's Roy Summer. So Summer, who's been involved all night, and Fort Wayne may be trying to get some vengeance on Summer because it was Summer who delivered the check that sent Russ Adam into the goal. But yet, as we talked about, we thought it was a good back-checking play. It was a good clean check. The referee was never going to call a penalty on that play. He never raised his hand once. And the Comets, however, jumped Roy Summer at center ice. Uh, Summer certainly not roughed up too much in that fight as Camazola just jumped on top. There weren't a whole lot of punches thrown. Both players now, Camazola and Summer, will retire for the evening with a minute 12 left. And also, many things have been thrown on the ice here, and we're going to have to pause a bit to get them picked up. Well, we see 
a lot of the fans gone here in the Memorial Coliseum. A lot of empty seats, but there's a big crowd around the Muskegon bench because the Muskegon fans are loving it. Well, that's why they, they jumped them. They wanted the game misconduct, and I, I can't think back. I hope Roy doesn't have another one uh, during the series. I'm not quite sure. Not in this series. No, he doesn't. But if he, even if he had one, Bob, in the first series against Indianapolis or the second one against Saginaw, the rule in the playoffs is you're allowed three. If you reach the third one, you must sit out, and we would have to play shorthanded. But I think uh, at most, this would be Roy's second game. Well, I know that he did get a game misconduct for three fights in uh, the Indianapolis series. So he does have one. So let's just hope he doesn't have three. Now, so Summer is gone. He gets five for fighting in a game misconduct. For the Comets, Tony Camavola, five for fighting. And now we're underway again, playing out the final one minute in. Now five seconds of the game. The Lumberjacks are going to win it. They're up five to two here. One minute left in the hockey game as the puck is sent outside the Muskegon zone and brought back in. So we have a Fort Wayne offside. With the timeout, let's take a brief 10-second AAA time. Seconds left. Puck sent in behind the Muskegon net. Taken there by Dan Node. Eight seconds left. Cleared out by Mayer to center ice. Five seconds left. At center ice, long shot by Hendricks, love by Ford. We have a whistle with two seconds left. Offside is the call against Fort Wayne, but the Lumberjacks raising their sticks in triumph. They know that they are up 3-0 in this series. As now we'll come back for one final drop of the puck. There's two seconds left. The Lumberjack contingent behind the Muskegon bench is on their feet. They're waving anything they have that is black and gold. And this is certainly a happy moment for Muskegon hockey. Here's the drop of the puck. The final two seconds tick off, and yes, sir, Larry Gordon, the Jacks will be coming home with one hand on the turn of cup. Well, it, you know, these guys have played like a team all through the playoffs. Uh, you know, we've been criticized for some of the trades that uh, we've made, and boy, the players that we traded for have sure come up large for us in the turn of cup uh, playoffs. And I'll tell you what, it's a pleasure to see these guys get rewarded for the hard work. It's a pleasure to see a guy like Rick Lee, who in my opinion is much too good to coach in the minor leagues. He should be in the National League somewhere, but he deserves this, the players deserve it, and uh, you know, it's just a great, great feeling. Now the Lumberjacks, as expected, very happy as they file off the ice. They have defeated the Fort Wayne Comets for the second straight game by the score of 5-2, and now lead it 3-0, going home for game four and looking for the Turner Cup sweep in the Walker Arena next Tuesday night. <laughs>